Office. The 20 year old man who reportedly could not swim was last seen by friends near the water's edge. Well, that prompted a search in the water by multiple agencies, including the Coast Guard. The man originally from Brazil was recovered yesterday morning. The incident remains under investigation. A Destin City Council meeting ends with a last minute item added to the agenda, which results in an unexpected outcome. The call for Carice Lejeune the city manager to resign. News 13's Peyton LaCicero tells us how the push for a resignation began. It all started here Monday, July 2nd. At first, it was said to be a performance review for the city manager. And then Councilman Rodney Braden wanted to make changes to her contract and eventually called for Lejeune's resignation. It was really disturbing that this all took place in a short period of time. Lejeune has worked for the city for two years and was described to be a person who goes by the book. There's sometimes the city council members that want her to resign um, weren't doing it by the book. And when she would do, you know, try to resist those type of things or correct them, I think that built some animosity there and they just want her gone. Mayor Jarvis says there's a lack of transparency. If you're going to ask someone to resign, uh, usually you give reasons. You allow the other person, to, the city manager, to defend themselves. Her most recent performance review was said to be glowing, and Lejeune even received a raise. Correct, 3.9 out of a 4.0 rating on her job performance. So um, it's kind of interesting that we went from that in January of 2018 to what happened Monday night. I was angry that it went down the way that it went down. Mayor Jarvis warned that this situation is going to cause a problem for the city. Until there's a more accountability where everybody works and operates within the confines of the city charter, then I think this is going to be a continuing problem. The next several days will be crucial for the city of Destin. Lejeune has until July 13th to sign the documents. In Destin, I'm Peyton Lococero, News 13. Well, legally, the Destin City Council holds the authority to fire and hire the city manager. If the documents are not signed by the 13th, they have the right to terminate the city manager. Well, in Bay County, three men are arrested after Bay County officials find more than a pound of crystal meth and a small amount of marijuana in a hotel room. As News 13's Megan Myers tells us, an important lead helped authorities make the arrests. They had been here about 30 minutes. Tuesday, Bay County officials arrested three men from Georgia. Investigators say they received a search warrant at a hotel in Panama City Beach early in the morning. We opened up the, the motel room. Um, there wasn't much there. There was a few pieces of luggage. Uh, I'm sorry, a few pieces of clothing, stuff that they just, uh, just a few things. Uh, and then the methamphetamine was hidden inside the room. Officials wouldn't go into great detail about what led investigators to the three men due to the ongoing investigation. But Lieutenant Kevin Francis says they often see people travel into the area from surrounding states to commit crimes. What we found is it's kind of common uh, for those types of things, uh, for, for people to decide they wanted to come to Bay County uh, to sell large amounts of methamphetamine. That's exactly what happened with this guy. Records say more than 400 grams of methamphetamine and less than 20 grams of marijuana were found. All three men are facing a trafficking methamphetamine charge. In this case, it's over 400 grams. So trafficking methamphetamine comes in, in categories based upon weight. And this one is the, the highest one that we could have given them. It's over 400 grams. Lieutenant Francis says the men are also charged with importation of methamphetamine into the state of Florida. That's a capital felony. Uh, so at the end of this, when, when the charges and punishment come down, um, they could be facing up to life in prison based upon uh, bringing that large of an amount in, in, in the Florida. In Panama City, Megan Myers, News 13. Investigators say they do not believe anyone else was involved other than the three men arrested. A Defuniac Springs man enters a plea to several sex crime charges. According to State Attorney Bill Ed's office, Ishmael Estrada pled no contest to two counts of lewd and lascivious battery, as well as one of using computer to solicit the sexual conduct of a child. After pleading, Estrada was sentenced 18 years in the Department of Corrections. On his release from prison, he may be subject to deportation from the country. These charges are connected to November 2017 after a 14 year old victim told investigators Estrada started messaging her and pressuring her to have sex with him. More information on this case can be found on mypanhandle.com. 
in Walton County, a major change where beach trespassers could be arrested and prosecuted. A recent change in Florida law now giving some landowners the ability to declare portions of the beach private. Earlier this week, Sheriff Mike Atkinson saying his deputies would not arrest trespassers after he received word from the state attorney's office that they would not prosecute. However, in a statement issued yesterday, State Attorney Bill Edens contradicts the sheriff, saying that both offices must follow the law. We reached out to the sheriff's office and officials there say they are aware of this change and are reviewing the policy. The 4th of July celebrations are coming to a close and Panama City Beach officials are now focusing on cleaning up the trash left behind. The TDC had crews out bright and early this morning, but the city is really pushing people to pick up after themselves. Tourist Development Council officials are reminding visitors and locals to follow the leave no trace ordinance, meaning whatever you bring to the beach should leave with you, and this includes your trash. The TDC provides services that pick up garbage on the beaches early in the morning, six days a week. The city officials are reminding residents they are responsible for picking up their trash on their properties. Leaving garbage out on the beaches could result in citations or tickets. Basically, if I go out there and I see that the property is, is, is garbage everywhere, there's cans, there's beer bottles, uh, you know, a lot of that stuff, you know, people have children and uh, those bottles and, and, and items can, can hurt people. So uh, if we see it as a problem, that's, that's when we'll go inside and notify the property owner there's an issue. Code enforcement says they will not give citations before warning property owners of the problem first. Fourth of July celebrations aren't over just yet. A long-standing tradition in Jackson County is the annual Freedom Springs Triathlon. It used to be held on the Fourth of July. Now it's held the weekend after. News 13's Ashley Williams says there's still time to even sign up. It's that time of year again where athletes take an early morning plunge. The 33rd annual Freedom Springs Triathlon takes place in Mariana. This is an, an annual tradition. It's always held out here at Blue Springs. Participants will start off with a quarter mile swim then a 10 mile bike ride and a 5K run to follow. This year, organizers have also added a family wave to the fun. So the family can um, kind of race together. Parents can run with the kids and, and do the whole thing. Um, and you can compete together as a family as a whole new division. The triathlon was started by a Mariana family. When they decided they wouldn't continue to host it, organizers with Beach Blast Triathlon and Duathlon took over. Members of the Jackson County Tourist Development Council volunteer each year. We come out and do the, um, the check-in, body marking, uh, get the participants kind of situated with armbands, tell them where to go, get all that kind of stuff together. For years, men and women have come from all over to compete in the race. Andreessen says with more than 150 participants each year, it brings money into the community. They'll stay overnight, which means they're in our restaurants, they're in the hotels, they're getting gas, they're spending money in the local economy. So it's a, it's a pretty good event for the area. Jackson County does not get any of the proceeds from the race, but donations are raised and given to Blue Springs as a thanks for letting them use the facility. In Jackson County, Ashton Williams, News 13. And Drayson says more volunteers are needed. If you're interested, there is a meeting tonight at Blue Springs at 6 o'clock. For more information on the race and how you can even sign up, you can visit our website, mypanhandle.com. Well, this week is full of thunderstorms and fireworks, loud noises that could be taking a toll on your pet. News 13's Chelsea Tadonio explains the side effects of anxiety in dogs. Fireworks are a tradition of celebrating America's birthday. The bright colors and large booms make for an exciting experience. But fireworks have an effect on dogs with anxiety and can cause a certain reaction. Panting, pacing, drooling, restlessness, hiding like under a bed, something to kind of get away from what they're scared of. If your pet shows these symptoms, there are things you can do to help them. You can play classical music or on white noise and that could tend to drown out some of the, the sounds. If you have a dog that likes to be crated, you know, you can have them in their crate but have the door open and then you could have it covered with like a blanket, something to muffle the sound. Animals currently in shelters also had a reaction to the fireworks. They're a little bit more um, timid in, when we first get here and then they just you know start warming up and then they're happy to see us and it's a whole new day and everything's okay. Bay County Animal Control had about 50 animals in their shelter for the fort. It is a natural survival instinct for dogs to run when they get scared, especially during fireworks or storms. We're getting a lot more calls of people that are seeing dogs that are running at large in their area. 20 to 50 percent of dogs are 
affected by some sort of loud noise phobia. So if you are bringing your pooch to more fireworks this week, make sure they're on a leash. In Panama City, Chelsea Tadonio, News 13. Well, another way to make sure you can find your pet is to get them microchipped. It only costs $15 with Bay County Animal Services. The president took to Twitter and attacked Congress on immigration. What he said and how Congress is responding. And crews in Thailand are working around the clock to rescue a soccer team stranded deep inside a cave. I just thought this was the Hey, welcome back to News 13 of this Friday morning. <laughs> Is that singing? You just I have to sing it. I love it. Oh, yeah, you have to sing it. And a really good start to this Friday morning. I, I like the singing because it goes with the weather because it's perfect. There you go. I dare to <laughs> say it felt a little comfortable when I walked in this morning. It does feel pretty comfortable. Um, we do have that chance, of course, of storms and showers because it's that typical summer pattern that is here uh, for the panhandle. But yeah. uh, it should be pretty nice for your Friday. But our weekend weather not looking too great. Oh, no. No. Uh -oh. All right. Unfortunately, uh -huh. but we'll talk about that in a little yeah, bit. Right now, let's focus on the positive. Today, the now, let's today. save her today. <laughs> All right, sounds yes, good. Our very next guy camp, like I said, it's looking pretty nice out there this morning. Those temperatures uh, right now, uh, not too bad at 75 degrees. Humidity at 93%, so it is humid out there. Um, not too, too bad, but it is pretty humid. And you can see over in Panama City Beach, that humidity. It looks very humid out there as you head out to start your Friday. So, uh, but still not too bad. No moisture that is moving through just at this point. Our temperatures right now across the panhandle, we're staying in the uh, 70s, 75 Apalachicola, 73 Panama City and Blunt Sound, 74 Mariana and 71 into Phoenix Springs. Our live Viper radar, a couple of little storms and showers off the coast. Uh, some of those are moving uh, to the coastal areas. And uh, so some of those areas, Port St. Joe, Apalachicola, seeing a couple of storms and showers this morning, but mostly our panhandle staying pretty clear for your Friday morning. Our satellite and radar, though, you can see those unsettled conditions really across the Gulf Coast. Just a lot of really small showers are uh, staying offshore for your morning and even uh, off the coast of Florida. Uh, down south of us, we are seeing some storms and showers as well. So our future cast. So let's take a look at that weekend because I know we talked about that weekend weather. Unfortunately, we do have some uh, bad weekend weather coming, some uh, moisture moving through the panhandle. We have a, a cold front that's going to be moving uh, to the panhandle, so that's going to bring the moisture with it. You see that Saturday 
afternoon. Uh, all of that green, all of that moisture and rain. We could see some wind threats as well. We could see some uh, thunder, lightning with that and even into our Monday. So starting Saturday evening all the way into our Monday, we are going to see uh, some rain showers moving across the panhandle for today. But for today, coastal inland temperatures 89 to 94. So uh, a lot of the places in the uh, inland areas could be getting into the mid 90s for our Friday. So it's going to be a hot one out there, but it'll be a nice beach day. Of course, if you can find those dry hours, just a 40% chance of storms and showers. So uh, looking a lot like how yesterday looked, uh, but just those pop up showers, especially in our afternoon hours. Uh, but it is going to be very warm and humid. It's that typical summer weather that we've been seeing really over the past week. Very warm and humid. Uh, but in your next weather, we're going to tell you about those uh, pop up showers that we're going to be seeing for today. Of course, our weekend isolated strong storms uh, for our Saturday into our Monday and tropical storm barrel. We're going to give you an update on that when we uh, do our next full weather. Chris Kelsey. All right, thanks so much, Karen. Out of national headlines, embattled EPA Administrator Scott Pruitt stepping down. The announcement comes in the middle of a long, lingering cloud of controversy. President Trump announced on Twitter yesterday he had accepted Pruitt's resignation. Trump wrote, Pruitt had done a, quote, outstanding job at the EPA. The president had recently confirmed Deputy Andrew Wheeler is taking over as acting EPA administrator this week, next week. Pruitt's resignation follows months of criticism, during which he was the subject of one ethics controversy after another. Those controversies included exorbitant spending on security and travel, as well as questionable use of resources. Most recently, there were reports his staff kept secret calendars and schedules to hide controversial contacts with industry representatives. President Trump is just four days away from announcing his Supreme Court pick. A source familiar with his interview efforts say the president has wrapped up his interviews talking with seven contenders. ABC News has learned the front runners include Brett Kavanaugh, Amy Coney Barrett, Raymond Kethledge, and Amul Tapar. They all met with the president earlier this week. Such an important decision, and we're going to give you a great one like Justice Gorsuch. Uh, we, uh, we hit a home run there, and we're going to hit a home run here. But one potential nominee is facing pushback from some top Republicans, Federal Court of Appeals Judge Kavanaugh. Some Republicans are worried Kavanaugh won't be a reliable conservative vote. ABC News has learned GOP Senators Rand, Rand Paul, Tom Cotton, and Ted Cruz called the president to express concerns. Uh, the president took to Twitter and attacked Congress on immigration. News 13's Anna Warnke reports that one of the president's strongest supporters in Congress agrees that lawmakers need to get on the ball, but is not sure they can get it done. President Trump blasted lawmakers Thursday morning, tweeting, Congress fix our insane immigration laws now. We got to quit talking. Texas Republican Congressman Louie Gohmert says the president is right. We have got to get him the money, got to get him the ability. Build the wall where it's needed, secure the border. But Texas Democratic Congressman Henry Cuellar says that's not going to happen until both parties are willing to truly work on a compromise. And until we get to that, where we actually have a bill that's written by both Democrats and Republicans, uh, we're not going to have anything uh, done. Congress made two attempts to pass immigration reform in June, but neither of those bills passed the House. I hope it sinks in uh, to the president, it sinks in uh, to our Republican. Uh, uh, leaders that it's got to be bipartisan. And Gomert agrees Congress isn't any closer to passing an immigration overhaul than they were months ago. The president's doing what he can. He hadn't gotten the support he needs from a majority in the House and Senate. We're ready to work uh, uh, with the president. Weyer says it really comes down to two issues. Democrats want full protections for dreamers, children who arrived in the U.S. illegally with their parents, and Republicans want money to fund the president's border wall. It's not going to go away. It's an emotional topic. Quayer says the best strategy moving forward is splitting the controversial issues into smaller, more narrow bills instead of trying to bundle them all together under one massive immigration package. In Washington, I'm Anna Warnicke. Well, the woman who climbed the Statue of Liberty on the 4th of July has been charged with trespassing and interference with government agency functions. 44-year-old Teresa Okumo was arrested Wednesday after she climbed to the base of the statue in an, apart, an apparent protest against President Trump's immigration policies. She could be seen waving a t-shirt that read, Rise and Resist, and Trump, Care Makes Us Sick. 
Well, a former uh, Thai Navy SEAL is dead this morning. He died inside the cave where 12 boys and their soccer coach are still trapped. CNN's Andrew Spencer explains what happened. Officials in northern Thailand say the rescue diver was a former Thai Navy SEAL. He had just finished delivering oxygen tanks to the cavern where 12 boys and their soccer coach have been trapped since June 23rd. On his way back from the boys to an underground command center, officials say the diver ran out of air while underwater. After his death, other rescue divers are trying to stay focused on the task at hand, keeping the boys alive. Definitely you can feel it, that it has an effect, but uh, uh, we're moving on. Everybody's a professional, so we're trying to put it away and, uh, and uh, avoid it never happen again. For days, experts have emphasized the dangers of cave diving, even for experienced divers. Traveling for hours in the darkness, often with or against the flow of water, through some very narrow passages. It's hard work. Um, it's a scary sensation if you're not used to it. And even when you are used to it, it can be very scary. Crews are still pumping as much water out of the cave as they can, especially with heavy rain in the forecast. Divers have been teaching the boys how to use oxygen masks, but the death of an experienced diver in those tunnels punctuates the dangers of trying to bring the boys out that way. The fear that someone will panic is absolutely legitimate. And then, of course, that brings not only a hazard to the child, but also to the expert diver. I'm Andrew Spencer reporting. 24 minutes now after the hour and into our first trivia question on this Friday morning. Yeah, so uh, we're going to wrap up the week strong. We feel All confident. Right. Yes. That we're going to finish it strong. We, we do indeed. So let's see what we're asking you this morning. What Ooh. is on the fifth floor of the Supreme Court building? <laughs> what is on the fifth floor? floor of the Supreme Court building, a swimming pool, a bowling alley, a gym, or a basketball court. I didn't realize any of these things would be on the fifth floor of the Supreme Court building. Yeah, I mean, all of these sound fun. Uh-huh. Real, real fun, a nice little break, you yeah. know, in the midst of uh, court. Stress of court, yeah. yeah. Okay, uh, we're going to do some thinking. And you do the same. Let us know what you think. Your turn at WMBB.com. Email your answers on in.
We are back on this Friday morning. We just like the way Friday sounds. Just rolls off the tongue. It sure does. Took the words right out of my mouth. You even roll the R if you can. Friday. Oh, I like that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Friday. <laughs> <From> you, <laughs> I can't really do it. So we'll just let you do it. Okay. Hey, back to that trivia question this morning. We're feeling confident about this, but this was really just a pure guess. None of us really truly know the answer. Yeah. Uh, what is on the fifth floor of the Supreme Court building? A pool? Bowling alley, a gym, or a basketball court? Well, we all kind of just went with a gym because yeah. bowling alley, man, that'd be noisy above the spring right? court. Basketball court would be kind of annoying. Swimming pool, man, if you get a leak, you're going to flood everything below it, including the Supreme Court. So we're going uh, with a gym. Going with the gym. No well, way. A basketball court. All right, very cool. One way to de stress a little basketball. Yeah, I guess. Yeah. Look at that. I wonder if it's something they still regularly use or is it just there? Or oh, it's just there. Yeah, maybe yeah. it's... Yeah. We'll have to look into maybe that. Maybe it's just there and it stores boxes, old, <laughs> you know... Right, like court, it's... Old court cases, <laughs> four computers. Archives It's all on paper. They just stored in the gym. Yeah, maybe. We'll have to, we'll have to look into that. That's interesting. I was yeah. not expecting that to be a basketball court. Nah, me either. Well, speaking of basketball court, we're going to talk some sports locally. Nice segue there, Kelsey. Yeah. Patrick Brickman has a look at a South Walton athlete who made her debut at Wimbledon this week. Good morning, everybody. A milestone for a former Panhandle athlete. Alexa Garacci was a 2009 South Walton grad and tennis state champion. She went on to play tennis at Alabama, but yesterday morning made her Wimbledon doubles debut. How cool is that? Here she is on the left with fellow Alabama teammate Aaron Routliff. Now they made the tournament after winning two qualifying matches, taking on the number three ranked duo. That's Barbora Krejcikova and Katarina Sinekiova. That's uh, from the Czech Republic. They would fall in the first set 6-2. You saw that ace a second ago. Uh, now Sinekiova serving to stay alive. Her shot goes into the net. This is the Bama duo now taking the second set 6-2. That forces a third deciding set. Routliff now serving, facing break point. Her shot goes wayward here off the return, so they would fall behind here in that final set. Uh, we go on and Sina Kiova now serving. This is match point. The return is long, so the duo do fall in the match. 6-2, 2-6, 6-2, but that is an incredible moment nonetheless for Garachi, the South Walton athlete. Like I said, hopefully they can make it back there. I'm Patrick Brickman. That's all for your Friday morning Sports Minute. A Florida pilot critically injured after a small plane crashes and catches fire. Details next.
We're so glad you're joining us for News 13 this morning. I'm Kara Murphy. Our Prairie Nick Sky Cam. Not a bad start out there. Uh, looking out over Panama City. We're seeing that first light, a couple clouds out there, but no rain is moving through at this point. Temperatures right now 75 degrees, humidity 93%. So uh, like we've been seeing over the past couple mornings, very humid out there. Uh, summer trend continuing our live viper radar this morning. Couple storms and showers off the coast. Uh, those coastal areas could be seeing a little bit of rain moving through this morning. Our morning should be overall pretty clear, but as we get into that afternoon, the same thing we've been seeing over the past week, those uh, afternoon showers will be passing through. Uh, if you're heading out to the beach today, those air temperature 90 degrees, so it's going to be hot again today. Hotter than yesterday was. Yesterday was a very hot day today. Going to be another hot one out there. Surf temperature 86 degrees, wave heights 1 to 3 feet, and a moderate rip risk. So uh, yellow flags for both Walton Bay and Gulf out there. If you're heading out on the water today, Gulf water 75 degrees, Bay water 86 degrees, seas at 1 to 3 feet, and a moderate chop in the bay. And you see afternoon storms possible but we're already seeing some of those storms and showers offshore this morning. Our Shipwreck Island UV index today 11 extreme. So um, same as yesterday, it was an 11 as well. So we're going to see that sun, that heat and humidity uh, on the, across the panhandle, especially in those beach areas. Uh, let's take a look at those next seven days and that weekend. We can see rain, rain, rain on the forecast. We have a chance really almost every single day, even into next week, scattered showers and storms throughout the panhandle. But that week Weekend, though 60% chance on Saturday. Those temperatures though were staying pretty high in our inland week ahead. That chance of storms and showers still at 60%, 50% for Sunday, but we are going to see those storms and showers moving in, especially Saturday evening through our Monday, but we are going to be tracking that weekend weather for you, but have those plans in place. If you have outside weekend plans, you're probably most likely going to be seeing some rain moving through this weekend. Chris, Kelsey. Now to some headlines. Uh, around the state, and a pilot is critically injured after a small plane crash uh, crashes and catches fire in Port Orange. There was one passenger on board yesterday who suffered non-life-threatening injuries. The Federal Aviation Administration says the plane's left landing gear collapsed. It veered off a runway and crashed inside the Spruce Creek Fly-In neighborhood. The Miami-Dade School District has to hire 100 officers before school starts in the fall. New officers in the first batch of recruits say it's a calling to serve. CNN's Gina Benitez has a story. Congratulations. A new batch of officers sworn in Tuesday. Each one will be a school resource officer in Miami-Dade. This is the first swearing in for the Miami-Dade Schools Police Department since the passing of SB 7026. Passed after the Parkland shooting, it requires all schools have an armed guard on campus starting this upcoming school year. We both have a, a moral and legal obligation ensuring that for the beginning of the next school year, we have a police officer in every single school. Some of the new inductees have previous law enforcement experience. Area Nunez is one of them. It feels great. It feels nice to be back. Others like Freddie Rosa are completely new to law enforcement. Rosa was most recently an elementary school teacher. He's making the move from educator to officer. After those unfortunate events that happen at the schools, I really felt the call in my heart to do more, you know, to protect the children at beyond the classroom settings. This group, the first of 100 planned hires for these positions. The department's chief saying they're looking for a specific kind of person for the job. Local municipalities, uh, officers do great work as well, but to work eight or 10 hours a day with today's youth in a law enforcement capacity, it takes a special person. So we're specifically targeting uh, officers that not only want to be uh, law enforcement personnel, but specifically want to work with kids. A batch of eight new officers will be sworn in next week. Well, right now may be the best time for you to go solar. Learn why.
Hey, welcome back to News 13 this morning on this Friday. And wow, that is a perfect Friday shot. Oh, just absolutely stunning. And all those chairs are just waiting for us to get sitting. <laughs> I know. Sit Can we just them? head out should there we, right now? Yeah, should we? Just, just bring go? the cameras yeah. with us. I'm, and I'm ready. Wow. <laughs> and those temperatures outside right now are looking uh, pretty nice in the 70s, really, as you head out to start your Friday across the panhandle. And for today, we still have that chance of rain that's going to move through. Of course, uh, kind of the same trend that we've been seeing all week, those afternoon showers. But inland, uh, areas could make it up to 94 degrees. So today's going to be hotter than yesterday was. Yesterday was a hot day. Today's going to be even hotter. <laughs> even hotter. All right. Why are we not surprised to hear you say I, that? You know, doesn't even faze so. me anymore. <laughs> I know the answer to that. Yeah, because well. it's chill. Oh, I know it. Well, exactly. Okay. So smart on well. Fridays. <laughs> All right, Kara, we will be prepared for yes. the heat. Oh, yeah. Well, the idea of using solar energy in our own homes continues to gain popularity in the country. And yesterday, those interested in the solar energy gathered to learn more from a co-op that helps inform people of the process. Yeah, News 13's Alex Thorson tells us how right now may be the best time for you to go solar. People go solar for a variety of reasons. Many want to reduce their carbon footprints, but volunteers with Solar United say most people are interested in seeing their electricity bills shrink. If you have, say, a $250 electric bill, you can put panels on your roof to bring your electric bill down to like $30 or $40. Thursday evening, locals who haven't quite made the jump gathered to find out more. They've been thinking about it for a very long time. However, it's still an intimidating process. Solar United teams up with local organizations like the Bay County League of Women Voters to educate and then sign people up to go solar. This area, I believe there's 60, maybe 70 um, homeowners that have signed up. The cost for solar panels depends on several factors, like the size of your roof and how much sun your roof gets, for example. If you sign up with the co-op, an installer will come out, evaluate your roof, and give you a price estimate for free. Alvin Peters is going through the process right now. They found it to be a nice sunny roof, suitable for uh, solar panels. He's expecting to save a lot of money after his panels are installed. Over seven or eight years, the panels pay for themselves. And after that, you're basically getting electricity at little or no cost. In Panama City, Alex Thorson, News 13. Solar panel installments usually start around $8,000, but there's a 30% federal tax credit for those who make the jump to solar energy. The sign-up period to go solar with this co-op will end on Tuesday. To get involved or find out more information, you can always head to our website, mypanhandle.com. Well, one woman proves that you're never too old to get on a motorcycle. That story is up next in What's Trending.
Hey, welcome back to News 13 this morning. Check out this shot over in Panama City Beach. That is so beautiful for this Friday. We already have some people out there enjoying their Friday morning, getting an early start out there. I love it. <laughs> Chris Kelsey, all ready to go out there? Yeah. <laughs> Let's go. I love it. I love it. Let's check out our Perry Young Sky Cam as well this morning. Actually looking gorgeous out there to start out this Friday. Uh, a really awesome start. 75 degrees out there, so pretty pleasant. 93% is that humidity as well. Over in Panama City Beach, we already saw uh, that uh, that shot that our cameraman Kyle had, but you can see that looks very humid out there, but we're seeing that sunrise in the background just looking beautiful. So we'll focus on the positive for right now. Right now, uh, if you're heading out to start your day, those temperatures across the panhandle really in the lower to mid 70s uh, for your Friday morning and our live operator this morning pretty clear out there as we check it out. We uh, do have some storms and showers offshore that we are seeing, but for the most part, it's going to stay pretty dry for your morning commute uh, as you head out to start this Friday and this Friday is going to be a really nice Friday. So enjoy those dry hours while you can our satellite and radar. We do see those unsettled conditions really across the whole Gulf Coast. You can see storms and showers staying off the coast, but a lot of those for this weekend, uh, we're going to see a lot of moisture and a lot of rain moving across the panhandle. So let's check that out on our future cast. Our Friday, not looking too bad morning. Begin to those afternoon hours. You see those pop up showers move across the panhandle and that moisture. But that Saturday, though, you get into those evening hours. That cold front is moving towards the panhandle. It's going to linger here for a little bit. And we see uh, those heavy uh, storms and showers, rain moving across the panhandle all the way into Monday. So we have that chance of rain that's going to be moving uh, to the panhandle. Panhandle and the Gulf Coast for really the next couple of days starting Saturday afternoon. Um, so for our uh, tropical satellite, we are watching uh, tropical storm barrel move uh, move in the Atlantic right now, uh, but it is expected to dissipate over the next couple of days. Not really expected to turn into anything, but it's something we are tracking for you for today. Coastal inland temperatures 89 to 94 degrees, so it is going to be a hot day across the Panhandle, but uh, hotter, a little bit hotter than yesterday. What we saw, but uh, those temperatures still going to stay in the mid 90s for many areas going to make it up to the 90s. But those uh, pop up showers, very warm and humid, just a 40% chance of those storms and showers, kind of similar to what we saw yesterday. But those storm chances are going to go up for the weekend. But for tonight, uh, the rain chance not too bad. It's going down just a little bit, just a 30% chance. Coastal inland temperatures 74 to 76 degrees. You could see a storm or two as you head into your evening hours. So that coastal week ahead, the next seven days, we are expecting rain to move across the panhandle as we uh, see those unsettled conditions really um, move to our area. That storm and shower chance for our weekend 50 to 60%, but it's not going to cool us off a little bit. But um, for our inland week ahead, those storms and showers still uh, across the panhandle, but those temperatures even hotter in our inland areas. Chris Kelsey. All right, thanks so much, Kara. Well, a pet parrot is back home after making quite the escape, and a baby gorilla makes its debut at the Texas Zoo, and it's adorable to say the least. Yeah, of course it is. Hey, a Florida feline is getting the royal treatment. <laughs> Moose, the cat, <laughs> frequents the Bulbux of Pensacola. The cat is so well liked, a couple who shops at the store gave them the, uh, it's a moose crossing sign. <laughs> moose crossing. Wouldn't it be like mooses? That's like personal for him. Oh, so I like, see what you're saying. It's not because we don't have any mooses in here. So this is just his sign. That's just his crossing. So it's just right. mooses it's, crossing. It's just like you know his right. Like it's possessive. It should be possessive. Mooses. I think it's just supposed to be kind of a fun play. I know, and I ruined it. Yeah. All right, let's move <laughs> on then. Fine. Uh, he, hey, you know what? He even has a, pay, a Facebook page. Oh, he does? All right. Yeah. <laughs> well, they moved the video on because you did ruin I it. Know. So we're going to talk about it. this. A Green Bay man is thankful today <laughs> after police and fire crews came to the rescue of his parrot. Uh, yesterday afternoon, a macaw escaped from a home and flew to the top of a tree. The Green Bay Metro Fire Department brought in the ladder truck and allowed the burn owner to go up with one of the firefighters. Unfortunately, the owner was able to pull his parrot into his arms and bring him back down safely. Well, there's a rescue you don't see every day. That is a great rescue. Yeah. Yeah. I and how, and uh, have you ever heard of this? How many beers can tropical birds drink? <laughs> how many, Chris? <laughs> Two cans. <laughs> oh. Get it? Will you be here all morning? Two cans. <laughs> yeah, there will be. 
Uh, <laughs> we owe that one to Kara Murphy, by the way. Yeah. Hey, uh, there was a, a party of sorts at the Dallas Zoo yesterday when a baby gorilla born last month made its public debut. Oh. It's the zoo's first critically endangered oh, wow. gorilla born in 20 years. Oh my goodness. The baby western lowland gorilla does not have a name yet. In fact, the zoo uh, has not yet been able to confirm its gender because its adoring mother has been keeping the infant very close. Yeah. Aww. Yeah, you're not getting close to that little fella. Yeah, uh -uh. look at the way she's holding her oh, or yeah. it. We don't know if it's a girl or a boy. Right. Oh my goodness, so precious. Well, a North Carolina woman celebrated her 100th birthday with a thrill ride on a Harley nice. with her nephew. Robbie Carter enjoyed a joy ride to the Wagon Wheel restaurant to celebrate the long, happy life that's touched so many. The town of Mars Hill proclaimed July 5th Robbie Carter Day even. Look at that, she's got a whole day. After this, she'll hang up the helmet until she turns 101 years young next year. Hey, hey, hey. Look at that. But that was Still doing it at 100 years old. I like it. Fender goddess, that's cute. <laughs> <laughs> 10 minutes at the top of the hour, stay with us. And we are back here on this Friday morning. A broken bone during summertime may not be so bad anymore. Yeah, with improved technology, a waterproof cast is a great option. CNN's Brennan McDavid has more on that story. Starting summer with a break, literally. I was roller skating and trying to do a trick I didn't even learn yet, kind of being a daredevil. Instead of landing on her feet, 10-year-old Kylie Dugan landed on her left arm. It felt like a million needles inside, like poke, like poking my, my muscle, and my bone just felt like out of place. This isn't her first broken bone, but it is her first waterproof cast. The uh, technology has gotten significantly better. Uh, they're easier to dry, they're easier to put on. Dr. Michael Beckish says he treats 50 to 100 fractures per week during the summer. We spend a lot of time putting casts on, taking casts off. 20 years ago, you had to wrap it up in trash bags to keep it from getting wet. It was a miserable experience. You had a plaster cast put on, it took 20 or 25 minutes to put it on. You had to wait for it to dry. Now Beckish says the inside liner is water resistant, while the padding and cast itself are waterproof. Just make sure they drain it, let the excess water out. Add 16 color options, and wearing a cast just got a whole lot more fun. That's all that's important to a kid is they can draw on it, and they can get it wet. Good job, buddy. If you could just put me in the ocean, I would be, I would stay there. Although waterproof casts have been around for about 25 years, the technology continues to improve. 
A Destin City Council meeting ends with a last-minute item added to the agenda. Learn what unexpected outcome came out of that. I said, can you send me some more material? <laughs> Well, welcome back. We have time for entertain, enter, enter, entertainment <laughs> news. That's yeah. right. Let's see what's happening in Hollywood. Here's Jason Nathanson. Ant Man and the Wasp teaming up. Follow my lead. The big movie opening this weekend Marvel's Ant Man and the Wasp. And with the Wasp, played by Evangeline Lilly, it's the first of the past decade of Marvel movies with a female superhero in the title. Actually, this is kind of a big deal. And this is about time. And she says her character is powerful, but maybe powerful in a way that's different from the guys. It's powerful to be graceful and nurturing and kind and forgiving and compassionate and generous. Ant-Man and the Wasp, the sequel to 2015's Ant-Man, will easily top the box office this weekend. Also out this weekend, Whitney, the family-sanctioned documentary about the rise and fall of Whitney Houston. Director Kevin McDonald says one of the big reveals is that Houston was allegedly molested by a relative as a child. It's certainly fair to say that it's maybe, in my opinion, the, the major um, contributor to, to Whitney's unhappiness. It's the second film about the superstar in the last year. Some say he should be next in line to play James Bond, and it looks like one of Idris Elba's next roles will be heavy on hot cars and lots of action, but not in the Bond world, in the Fast and Furious world. Variety reports that Elba will join Dwayne The Rock Johnson's Fast and Furious spinoff as the bad guy. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Jason Athenson, ABC News, Los Angeles. Well, we are heading into a whole nother hour, so get some more coffee and come back and join us. All right. All right. <laughs> Happy Friday. <laughs>
Now, News 13 This Morning starts with your forecast first. Sponsored by Lindsay Sweet Deals Furniture. Hope you're having a great Friday. I'm Karen Murphy. A gorgeous start out there as we check out our Prairie Young Sky Cam over Panama City. 73 degrees right now. Humidity is at 94%, so it's humid out there, but what else could you expect? Temperatures right now uh, in the lower to mid 70s. 75 Appalachian Pool at 73 Panama City in Blunttown. 74 in Mariana in our live Viper radar this morning. Uh, pretty clear in our inland areas. Our coastal areas could be seeing a couple storms and showers, but right now looks pretty clear. Just some showers off of the coast and offshore this morning that could possibly move inland for the rest of our day. But if you're planning out your day, it's going to be mostly sunny, warm and humid, but you could see a couple of storms and showers. I'll give you your full forecast coming up on News 13 this morning. It starts right now. Flames break out on the island side of the Destin Bridge. What officials are saying caused it. Plus a major change where beach trespassers could be arrest arrested and prosecuted in Walton County. And Panama City Beach officials are now focusing on cleaning up trash left behind from the fort. Live from your local leader, this is News 13 This Morning. Good Friday morning, everyone. Thanks for tuning in to News 13 of this morning. I'm Chris Marshall. And I'm Kelsey Peck. Happy Friday to you. We love saying that word and we love doing the Friday dance as we well. Do. So Is go it, ahead and do it, it with goes it. Something like this. Really quickly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just a little bit of a way to help you wake up and feel a little more spring into that step as we head into That's right. the weekend. But first, new this morning, a huge brush fire breaking out in Destin. According to the Okaloosa County Sheriff's Office, multiple fire departments worked overnight to put out the blaze, which is on the island side of the Destin Bridge. Now, Daniel Litz shared this video to uh, his Facebook page. Facebook officials believe fireworks may have started this fire. 